Hey guys, I'm Annie and welcome to my YouTube channel. I wanted to sit down today and talk about the UI. Blizzard recently updated all the customization options, making it a lot of fun actually to play around with how you want your UI to look. In the past, I always used Bartender. So for me with this pre-patch, I've been super excited to be able to just delete the add-on and use the options available to me in the game. I'll be deep diving into all the different options that's available, play through with the settings, show you guys exactly how you can customize so that maybe you can find a way to make your UI look perfect for you. Throughout the video, the UI might look a little bit wonky. I won't make it look perfect as I'm mainly just playing around with the settings. I will at the end show my UI, which I have, you know, tried to make as pixel perfect as possible and if you're interested in that one i do have a link below the description so you can just copy it straight if you'd prefer that over starting from scratch i'm really happy that blizzard finally gave us new ui options because it doesn't feel so good to use add-ons for it so it's nice to finally be able to uninstall bartender and just play around with the settings that's available in the game itself if you like these type of videos don't forget to comment like subscribe and hit the bell to catch future videos as well. I hope you enjoy the video. Okay, so we just logged in and the UI looks pretty clean as it is. And for someone who's been using Bartender for the past 15 years, actually more like 12, but I like to pretend that I'm one of the cool people who've played for 15. Anyways, I deleted Bartender, which is a big deal for me. I've used Bartender for so long, but this new UI, the new options that we have convinced me that it's time to delete it. So, and I'll go through all of the different options and settings for you to see whether that's for you as well. So the UI settings can be found here. You press escape and you go down to edit mode. You click it and you see all of the different options that are available. Notice how we have the layout modern picked for us by default, but you can also go back to classic, which you might recognize from the old UIs where we have our player frame and the target frame in the top left corner. I personally am a big fan of the modern one. I've always put my frames down here and now they have it as a preset for you to pick from. So I really like that. So I'm gonna make a new layout just to not ruin the ones that are already here. We're gonna call it new and press save. And now we can play around with it as much as we want. So we have all the different options here. Uh, target, party frame, raid frame, stance bar, pet bar, buff frame, debuff frame, extra abilities, possess bar, vehicle exit, arena frames, all sorts of things. I would recommend unticking most of these and just going one by one to make sure that you're taking care of each of the elements on their own. So we have target and focus, for example, here. So we can see we have the player frame, which you can make bigger. I personally do like to make it bigger, maybe not that big, but I would, I think in my UI, I have around 120, maybe 130. And you want to probably keep the target frame the same size. So if it's 120 over there, it would be 120 over there as well. You can adjust the grid in the background by moving this bar here and change it to whichever size that you prefer. If you like to count in big squares, then you can turn the grid spacing higher. And if you like the small squares, you can turn it lower. I think I kind of like it over here somewhere. Um, you have the purple line in the middle and you could count boxes to make sure that things are aligned properly. So here, for example, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight boxes before this frame here. We want to count on the other side too. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then we put this over there. I'm looking at the line of the HP bar there and there and trying to make them equal. And that should be just about right you can also snap them into position i do recommend that normally because it helps with you know some millimeters here and there to make sure it's in position but sometimes that can be annoying if you want it to be at a very specific point maybe in relation to another element somewhere else and in that case you can switch that off something which is not listed as an option here but is right behind me i can show you the chat so the chat frame is actually adjusted here in the edit mode as well. If you want to move it somewhere, make it smaller, make it bigger, you do that here too. So that's good to note because I remember being confused when I logged in and I couldn't move my chat the normal way of unlocking it. So you go into edit mode to move it around. 
Next up, I would adjust the party frames. I really like party frames to look like raid style party frames. I've always used this and I've been asked so many times what add-ons I'm using for party frames because apparently the setting was a bit hidden back in the day. The next part we can look at after party frames is raid frames. For a tin man raid size, I like to make things really big. I don't think that covers too much of the screen. So that that's what I did at first, but then I noticed going 25 and going 40 man is not allowing me to change the size, which is unfortunate. I am forced to use the same size for all of them. This I believe is an oversight when they made these settings because we did have the option to make the raid frames change size based on the size of the raid, but now it's sharing the settings across them. I've given this feedback to Blizzard, Hopefully they will give us the option to change the frame sizes based on how big the raid is because I like them to be big for 10 man, but when it's 40 man, I don't want it to cover my entire screen. The other options that we see here is the groups. So we have separate groups, vertical, horizontal, and then we have combined groups. Vertical and horizontal is more of a stylish difference. So you have here group one going like this, group two, group three, group four. Vertical goes this way. So when you make a bigger raid frame, 40, you have vertical going this way, all listed up, and then horizontal goes like this. Something which is cool about the combined groups, which does not state which group you're in, is that you get this column size option. You get this for both vertical and horizontal. You get the column size that you can adjust to make it fit as you would want it to be. For horizontal, it's row size, and again, you can fit, you know, you can fit your frames in the way that you want them to be. One thing to note with the rate frames is that for you, the rate frames may not be colored according to class and that setting is not here, which can be confusing, but I'm gonna quickly press save here and go back into my settings here in the options where you can find the settings to change your rate frames to have colors here display class colors. So if you find that all your rate frames are looking green, no matter what class it is, this is why class colors. Highly recommend. It makes it so much easier to see things. You can also decide to show pets, main tank and assist, perhaps if you're a healer. Personally, I just keep it clean on my DPS class and stick to class colors. So I'd say we have the main components now in place. We have our player frame, target frame, uh, raid, party frame. The next thing I want to talk about are the action bars. So we have, as you can see, we have three action bars stapled on top of each other here, and we have two action bars here on the side. The first one has some blizzard art around it. It's a lot more subtle, a lot cleaner, a lot smaller than the original art. So if you want a minimalistic look, it doesn't actually look bad to keep them. But if you wanna remove the art, the option is right here. So when you click action bar one, hide bar art. It's specifically only on action bar number one. A lot of people get confused when they're playing around with their action bars because they can't find the option to remove the blizzard art. It's on action bar number one. I would also recommend to hide the bar scrolling, which is the thing here on the left side to change what bar you're showing. In terms of positioning, you can move your action bars however you like. Uh, you can also have them snap to each other. Uh, oh, I just snapped it out of the other one now, but you, you can snap them all on top of each other if you want or next to each other. You can play around with it and see where you can stick them together. I personally uh, tend to go for a model like this, having action bar one, action bar two, action bar three, action bar four. Speaking of, how do we add more action bars, action bar settings? When you press on any of these, you get the button action bar settings. You click that, you can add more bars, as many as you'd like. You go back, and I would add another action bar there. I like having four down there and I like having two there so I can remove action bar six and seven for now. Or you can use them for something else. Got plenty of options. I tend to put the pet bar there. Right now, this is really messy. I'm just showing how to use it, but you get the idea. Next, I wanna talk about the elements on the right side of the screen. This objective tracker here is currently snapping automatically to some other elements. And I'll show you what I mean. Boss frames, not visible. Boss frames, visible. Objective tracker has moved down. I would recommend to not edit these for now because it seems like there is a bug where you can't make them adapt to each other after you start moving things. So for example, if I, if I wanna move my boss frames, 
they no longer adjust with each other, which I think is bad. I think it's nice to have them adjust with each other. And until that's fixed, I would honestly just reset to default position. You can, however, use larger frame, which I'm using, but just a note on that, don't move things around if you want them to adjust to each other. It's not only boss frames, it's also other frames such as arena frames. These are all adapting to each other and I think that's a really nice feature and after you move them around, they don't adapt to each other. So for example, here, when we made the arena frames bigger, we remove boss frames, you know, it adapts and goes straight up. It looks a bit weird this way, but the thing is you're never gonna have bosses and arena targets at the same time. So this scenario doesn't happen. It's more like you get either one or the other. And this way you have your arena frames and then you have the quests at the bottom. If you don't want this, and if you generally want your arena frames to maybe be positioned here instead, which is actually part of my UI, I have moved my arena frames, you can do that. But just keep in mind that sometimes having the adaptable thing is nice and to get that back, you need to reset to default position because moving it back here does not bring that feature back. Look, it's overlapping. It's covering each other. All right, so reset to default position. Due to this, I call it bug, uh, limitation where I can't make things adapt to each other by myself, only by default positions. I actually recommend not moving these because if you move these bars at all, uh, it means that they are on top of the other elements that are underneath and I can't move these frames to the side here without ruining what we just talked about. So I would go back and reset these into default position and keep them like that. It's a bit awkward. I would have preferred to, you know, maybe move them up a bit, but the problem is if I do that, it breaks the whole thing. <laughs> So for now, I would keep them as default position. If you're like me, you know, a little bit of an OCD, what I did was to cover this area with another bar. So I added an extra bar, let's say action bar seven, and I made it so it's, let's see if I can get the correct setting here. No, it has to be vertical. So we got two columns this way, reduce the number of icons, and then you can fit this little thing over there. And I played around with it a lot to make it, you know, not look like a weird gap, look like it's just continuing from the bottom. And it kind of worked for me. It kind of worked for me. That, but that's what I would recommend without touching the position of these other ones that are depending on each other. So nothing breaks. So there's a lot of other options that we have here that you may want to think about so that it, they don't end up being behind a different element on your screen. So you want to click all of them to make sure they're okay. We have the party frames, raid frames, the stance bar has been moved here to the bottom. So we want to move that up here so it's not hidden. Depending on what your preference is, uh, I believe what I did on mine was something like this and I put it here. A stance bar is visible to you if you play a class that actually has stances. So for example, for me, that would be a paladin. My warlock doesn't have anything, so this element just ends up being empty. Buff frame, debuff frame. Uh, I honestly am used to the buffs and debuffs being here. So I did personally not change them, but I did make them a little bit bigger just to see them more clearly. So I think I put them at 120 and I believe I did adjust the position a little bit as well. Then we have boss frames. We've already talked about that. HUD tooltip is basically when you mouse over people, you can move that wherever you want to. Uh, I'm kind of used to having it down here. Uh, I believe I did move mine here, but you can, um, you can decide to put it wherever you prefer. Cast bar is, I believe, hidden behind the bars as well. Yeah, it is. Cast bar is here. I would recommend making it big. <laughs> I'm putting it somewhere here, but you can put it wherever you want. You do also have the option to locking it to player frame, but I find that kind of weird, especially if you have a pet. If you don't have a pet, maybe it works, but if you have a pet class, it's kind of weird. Uh, I would stick to it being in the middle. You also have an encounter bar. Oh, uh, note how everything is hidden behind. It's because when you first move the action bars, all of these get pushed down to the bottom. So. It's actually good to note because you may want to move these things out before you adjust your action bars. So that's a good thing to note. I believe I put my encounter bar here. The encounter bar is basically different mechanics in different boss fights where there is some kind of bar that's getting filled up. So for example, in the Nazoth fights, we had the sanity bar. It happens in different boss fights here and there and you like to keep it somewhere that it's you know relatively visible. Extra action button, I like to keep somewhere here to make it visible. The next element to talk about is possess bar. 
Possessed bar has been a big question mark. People are trying to figure out what exactly it is. We first thought this is some kind of vehicle bar, but it turns out it's something different. So for Warlocks, I noticed that the Possess bar is used when I use the ability called Eye of Kilrog. I also tried Mind Control on a Priest, it did not work there. So besides Warlock and Priest, I haven't really tried it that much, so I don't know what exact abilities will make this happen, but a safe place to put it is probably above your action bars, make it visible, not covered by something else so that you can see it. I can also quickly showcase with my Eye of Kilrog ability to show you guys how it looks like. There you go. So it basically gives me two buttons, making it possible for me to exit the vehicle, the controlling of the unit. <laughs> so that's what that is. Talking Head is pretty simple. It's basically story based when you do certain quests, world quests, etc. A picture of an NPC might pop up with some text on it. That's what the Talking Head is. I like having it here because usually when it happens, I'm not really casting anything and there's nothing else on the screen. But if you prefer and if you want to, you can move it at the top or the middle or somewhere else, wherever you prefer to hear the story being told. Vehicle exit button pretty self-explanatory. Whenever you are in a vehicle, you want some kind of universal button. This is it. You can put it wherever you see fit. Maybe above the action bar could be a good place, uh, but wherever you prefer is totally fine. That's everything. I want to quickly show you guys the UI that I made for myself with everything that we've talked about in consideration. So I've named it Ana Fuchsia right here. Click that open. This is what I use. If you want to copy my settings, I have the string copied to clipboard here. I have pasted that in the description below. So if you want to copy it, you can go ahead to import settings. You click the button here, click import, paste the string in, name it whatever you want and click import. Just in case anything gets messed up, I would highly recommend you to first copy to clipboard your own layout, just in case you never know, copy your own into a notepad, save it in case something goes wrong, then you can import the UIs from other people. Keep in mind when you're importing a layout that you have the same screen resolution and a UI scale as the person you're importing from. So for me, my resolution is set at 1440p and my UI scale is at default 100%. If you're unsure what settings you have, you can go into the options, systems, graphic, you see a resolution here, minus 1440p, and your UI scale is here, mine is unchecked, which means it's at 100%. So you may wanna do that if things are looking a bit wonky and hopefully that fixes it for you. If it doesn't, then you may have to play around with it to adjust it so that it looks as it's supposed to be because uh, yeah, sometimes things just don't work even though they're meant to. So now that we've taken a look at all of the different elements and the customization options, I wanna mention a few things that can currently not be changed. So we have the bag and micro menu here in the bottom right corner. These elements cannot be changed. They can't be size adjusted, so you can't make them bigger or smaller, and you also can't move them. That's a limitation that I hope they will lift in the future. Same thing goes with the experience bar or reputation bar, if you're max experienced, here in the center bottom of the screen as well. Hopefully, as we expand on options for all the different elements that we have from before, uh, for example, the options I mentioned for the raid frames and maybe even, you know, adding size adjustments for the minimap. Hopefully, it's something that we can see added to the game in the future with more updates to the edit mode. I hope this video was useful and can help you play around with your own UI, uh, whether you want to start from scratch, maybe start from mine and edit it to your own liking, whatever way you prefer. If you did enjoy the video, feel free to comment, like and subscribe to support me here on YouTube and I'll see you guys for the next one. Bye! I think that's it guys. I think we're done. We did it. We did a video! Take two. Hey guys! Take three.